There's a lot of talk going on right now with tourniquets and having these with you for everyday carry. But is this item really as beneficial as we think it is for everyday carry? Let's find out. We're seeing a trend with a lot of people that are wanting to be better prepared. And I think that's a good thing. People are wanting to be better prepared to be able to protect their families uh, from dangers, wanting to be better prepared to be able to render aid to those that are hurting or suffering or that are injured. And all of this is a good thing, but we have to be careful in how we go about this and make sure that we are doing the most good with the resources that we have. So let this be a challenge to any of you out there that are trying to prepare yourself to educate yourself to be a better protector and someone that can render aid to other people. I wanna challenge you not just to take anything you see off social media, take it at face value and start implementing that right away. Take some time to dig into this and figure out, are there other people that are doing this as well? Is this just one person's idea of what is a good thing to do? Or am I collectively taking a bunch of data from a lot of people and saying, yes, it seems that this trend is consistent among a lot of people and something that is applicable to where I am right now and the setting that I am working in. So not only do we have to make sure that the data we're getting is good solid data from a majority of people that are all validating this data, but then we have to make sure that this applies in the specific area that we plan to be using it. And that's kind of what we're talking about today. So the Committee of Tactical Combat Casualty Care is a committee that has a lot of people from military and uh, trauma experience that come together and make guidelines that mainly the military uses to be able to treat casualties uh, in a military setting. Out of this has come a lot of civilian interest in uh, TCCC or TECC, IFACs, tourniquets, and all these things that are related and surrounding everyday carry or uh, concealed carry or carrying a firearm and being able to be prepared uh, to treat yourself if you're wounded or be able to treat someone else that has been wounded. So these kind of go hand in hand, but a lot of this data is coming from the military. Now, we want to get that data from the military because they have a lot of data that talks about people getting shot or IEDs or um, a lot of these other injuries that we don't see a lot on the civilian side. So that's a great place to pull data. But as we're pulling data, we wanna make sure that that applies to where we are. But this data that we're receiving is data that is uh, surrounding these young athletic uh, soldiers who are wearing plate carriers and helmets and all this ballistic gear riding inside bulletproof Humvees. And while the anatomy that's been affected by a bullet wound doesn't change whether it's in the desert or whether it's on the street um, in a downtown area, the defense mechanisms that were in place have a lot to do with where these people are getting shot and what to prepare for. The Journal of Trauma and Acute Care Surgery did a study back in 2016, and they looked at a certain number of casualties on the civilian side to determine what was actually the cause of death from these gunshot wounds. So in this study, they found mass shootings that happened in the US, and they took 139 of these casualties, and they determined the cause of death from these casualties. Of these 139 casualties, they determined that the number of casualties that bled out in an extremity where they could have put a tourniquet was zero. None of these casualties deaths could have been prevented with a tourniquet. And that's 139 fatalities from 371 different wounds. Now where this study did find most of the fatal uh, gunshot wounds were to the core or the chest and the head. And so it makes sense that law enforcement, SWAT teams and military are wearing plate carriers on front and back, wearing helmets, ballistic eyewear, that type of thing because those are the most valuable parts of your body, but that's also the largest target of your body and where people are generally aiming when they're aiming center mass. So if you wear a plate carrier around all the time and all of this is protected and a lot of this is protected with a helmet, then you may not need to be as worried about a lot of trauma to the chest. So carrying a bunch of tourniquets would definitely be something that would make sense because now your arms and legs are what's hanging out along with some junctional areas that you may need to wound pack with pressure dressings, quick clot, and that type of thing. Now, don't take me the wrong way here. I'm not telling you not to carry one of these. I'm just saying, if you are carrying 
only one of these and thinking that this is going to stop the majority of injuries or death from a gunshot wound, that might not be accurate, especially in a civilian setting. So continue to carry this and this and these, but know that there's a lot of other things that are surrounding medical care other than just applying a tourniquet. Being able to wound pack, applying chest seals, even just a hand over a sucking chest wound can occlude that and can allow that lung to start to reinflate. So there's a lot of things you can do even without a lot of specialized equipment to be able to treat these casualties and to be able to render aid to people that are suffering. Something else that would be valuable is to watch where you're going. Don't put yourself in circumstances where there's a high likelihood of getting shot or being in danger. And these guys can help. It's not very practical to wear all the time, but it is something that's available to civilians. And there may be some circumstances where it may be beneficial to wear those. Well, that's it for today. I'll leave a link to the study down below. And if you found this video helpful, leave us a like on this video. If you have any questions over the stuff we've talked about, or you have an idea for a future video, leave us a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. And if you've not already done so, hit the subscribe button and make sure your notifications are on. We post regular content and that will alert you when those videos go live. And as always, stay vigilant and stay safe.